Um, I feel like it's definitely a big game for the defense. You know, even after the Georgia Tech game, I'm pretty sure we still have a lot of doubters out there. You know, and it's always good to come back week in and week out and just show that you can be consistent with it. So I feel like us having a good game right here show that we have good consistency. Is it fun when everyone's talking about the quarterbacks, Deshaun, Lamar, and the offenses, and the defenses kind of get brushed to the side? It's your chance to really make a big statement on national television, like, hey, remember this side of the ball, too? Uh, yeah, but we don't really too much worry about that. You know, we're just trying to get the job done. We just want to come out with a W. How much does it help the defense, the, the death valley crowd, especially in a night game? Is it noticeably different than an earlier kickoff? Um, actually, it well, for me, it doesn't really, you know, give me any extra boost or anything. You know, I'm ready to go out there and play every game. Uh, but actually, it's actually louder for the defense to get out there during the home game. So. You know, it's kind of harder to communicate. You know, you can't really hear your other players on the field. So we might have to do some little hand gestures here and there. So, I mean, obviously we love the fans, you know. They do give us a lot of encouragement. But uh, as far as going out there and playing, you know, it just makes it a little harder to communicate. But it's nothing we can get get over. Would you feel like the Notre Dame game last year at all to you, just in sort of the vibe around campus and the way people were approaching? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it really reminds me a lot of the Notre Dame game. And uh, we kind of just trying to have the same focus with just blocking all that stuff out, especially with the stuff going on on campus. And uh, a lot of the students are doing stuff for this game. So, you know, just blocking it out, making sure that we come in and focus every day. When you're going up against someone as dual as Lamar Jackson, how, how does that test you in the secondary and the back end? Uh, that's uh, number eight. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I don't really feel like I don't really feel like we have to step out of our element or you know jump up another notch to really stop him. I feel like we have the tools and we have the skill set to limit him. And I don't, uh, you know, I don't really see any worries with him. Not saying that he's not a good player. He's definitely a good player. You know, I haven't really seen a quarterback, you know, as versatile as him, but. You know, I feel like we have a pretty good defense. So just my confidence in the defense and just us as a whole, us as a whole unit, you know, I don't think it would be that much of a challenge. What will you do if he tries to hurdle you? I'm going to slam him. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Chidar, when they're putting up 63 against that this year, we have a big offensive down for us tonight in, night out. Do you guys notice that weeks ahead? Do you pay attention to it? Do you start game planning before it as your yeah, I don't really too much worry about the scores of the other games that they've played. You know, um, we're obviously a whole different defense. You know, I don't know what those teams did in their schemes. I don't know what their game plan was going into the game. But, um, you know, I'm just real confident in Coach V's game plan for us. And I just want to go out there, you know, and execute it to full ability. And I feel like if we do that, you know, it'll be a different outcome. Is it tough to go against a guy like Lamar who can create so much, especially with your position? Like, what do you watch for? Is it tougher to stay disciplined, trying to account for where he might kind of free flow outside the pocket? Um, yeah, it's a little more difficult, but I, I kind of just related, like, to the Georgia Tech game, you know, with their quarterback. You know, he ran around a lot before he threw the ball. So it's all really about eye discipline. As long as you keep your eyes on your key, if you're reading your key, you can't really see what he's doing back there. You know, and if he runs around 10 seconds and throw the ball away, as long as you have your eye on your key, you know, you'll be in the right spot. So I don't really feel like it'll have us out of position too much. But is there a danger of that happening when you got, got a guy like that and maybe some of your defenders aren't able to keep up on that side when you scramble and you feel tempted to come in and, and try to help and all of a sudden there's a guy exposed you behind you? I mean, it could happen. I don't really see it happening with us. Just with us trusting our D-line, I feel like we got some stud athletes on the D-line. Uh, maybe not quite as fast as him, but, you know, fast enough to keep up with him and keep him contained in the pocket. So you're wearing your no-fly zone shirt. Uh, do you feel like the secondary has really answered a lot of the concerns that there were coming into the season with so many departures in the NFL? Um, I don't know. I don't really want to speak on that too fast because it's still early in the season, you know. And uh, like I said, I'm a big guy on consistency. So, I mean, that'll have to be a question that I have to answer end of the season.
you know, to see if we keep it up throughout the whole season.